Hello, what I want to do with this video is talk about the quarter project. The quarter project is going to be a report that is based upon an economic analysis. I have three, I'm sorry, I have two deliverables to keep you on task so that you don't get behind on the project. They're fairly straightforward and I'm going to take you through the first deliverable in this video. Now, this is the first part of the quarter project and it describes the project itself, some of the um, basic information to analyze the project. What you are going to do is put yourself in the shoes of the engineer that was evaluating this project and going through the investment decision. And you're going to be writing a report with these at a minimum included in the report and not necessarily the numbers themselves but the description of them. Now the way the report is going to be is, is I've, I have three key components of the report. Let's get down to the economic engineering economics justification. That's basically the, the Excel model you're going to be building. The stuff that we've been doing this quarter and some of the information that you you don't know, um, you haven't received yet. We'll be receiving within the next week. And so that's going to be 25% of the grade. And 25% of the grade is going to be a sensitivity analysis assessing the uncertainties associated with the project. You're going to be receiving information via video on how to do sensitivity analyses. And I'm going to take them, take you through a little bit of it today just to show you what I'm talking about. Um, and then a big chunk of the grade is the executive summary for the, of the report. And an executive summary is exactly what it says. It's a summary of the results of the report with a conclusion. It needs to be no longer than one page. And that needs to be one page, you know, 10 point or 12 point, not one page, eight point. It's important for this reason. When you start doing work in industry, you're going to be working with people that are very busy. They aren't going to have time to read through the entire report that you've done unless this report attracts their interest. So this executive summary summarizes the reports, the report that you've done, and hopefully attracts the interest so that this senior executive will be ready to read further or assign somebody else to look at this in detail. And then there's some other um, elements that are just basic to any report. One of them is just the assumptions that are inherent in this, and I'll go through that in a little bit. Um, you're going to have to draw a conclusion. So you're going to say, I would recommend this project, or I recommend not doing this project, and the reasons why you either recommend doing it or not doing it. Um, and 10% of the grade is going to be turning in the Excel worksheets for the two deliverables, 5% each. I'm not going to grade these other than you turned them in or you didn't turn them in. Um, the reason is that I want to make sure that prior to the 10th week, most of the work is done on the project so that you're going to be doing primarily this assessment. Now, typically, when you build a project in a worksheet to analyze the project, you're not going to have just one tab in your worksheet. You're going to have several tabs. And the whole idea of what we're doing is it's a, it's a small version of a company's income statement. And so what we're going to do is you think of a company's income statement, we're going to, we're going to parse it down into a project. And so we're going to have a revenue tab. That's like your total sales on the income statement. We're going to have an expense tab. That's like the various expenses on the income statement. And then we're going to have investments, taxes, depreciation. Those are elements that are shown in the cash flow um, um, statement. So we're going to put consolidate all of these into one statement, into, into one worksheet, I'm sorry. And what we typically do and what I would highly recommend is that you put together a front-end um, worksheet that has your input items in it. 
So these items right here that I've identified right here are the various input items that have come from this first part of the um, project description. And I have that highlighted in yellow. Um, highlighted in green is going to be my results. Now the only thing I'm going to show today is the before tax cash flow internal rate of return. Um, what we're going to learn in the next week is how to compute the after tax cash flow and that's how in, um, projects are analyzed on an after tax basis. And so what we're going to do is we're going to build a worksheet for revenue, expense, and investments. And then these are all going to feed into the after tax cash flow worksheet. So let's just start doing that. Now, um, this particular project has one source of revenue. That's going to be the sales of petroleum coke. Okay. And the sales are going to occur at the end of the first year they're going to begin. And so um, we want to enter numbers one time. So, so to generate our first year's revenue, we're going to go to our input sheet. And what we do is we reference the input sheet. This is going to be the 550,000 tons per year. We'll tag that times the revenue per ton. We'll tag that. And that gives us um, basically the base year, the year zero revenue. And we're going to multiply that by 1.5 plus the growth rate raised to first year's power. Okay, so if we drag this down, this is going to grow every year. And now we have our revenue stream. Now I want you to think about this for a second. If we had a company that had multiple projects or multiple products for the project we were working on we might have several sources of revenue there are different ways to get to the amount of revenue this is for this specific project now i want to show you what happens by dealing with just the um, the revenue stream what would happen if we said we want to change our annual growth rate to zero percent we change the one number here and it ripples all the way through here. Or I could leave it at 2%. I could change my starting revenue per ton and come up with a different amount. So we want to change numbers in one spot so they're easy to keep track of and only enter them once in a, in a document. Now let's look at our expenses. We have four categories of expenses, raw materials, labor, energy, and overhead. Now overhead is the easiest one. So let's look at the first element of the overhead. So we're going to go over to our input results worksheet. It's going to be the $7 million. And we entered it as seven, so we've got to multiply it by a million. And we're going to multiply this by a growth rate, even though it's zero for the base case, we need to include it. And we're going to raise that to one power. Uh oh, I have a type. Okay, we'll drag this down. It should stay at seven million. And just as a sanity check, Let's put in a 1% growth rate to see what happens. And we see that it grows. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for our other three expenditures. And so raw materials, $27.5 million a year. Um, whoops, sorry about that. So this is going to equal... 
the raw material rate times a million times one plus the growth rate. And we're going to raise that to this power here. Turn it into dollars. And then Now, this is a gross simplification, the way we're doing the raw materials. The raw materials could be based on the production of coke. Uh, so the amount of coke that you have could, could um, influence the amount of raw materials. There may be other elements you're going to add to this. We're just saying it's 27 and a half million a year. We're going to do the same thing with labor. So labor. 75 million a year. Oops. Times that growth rate. Now, um, this is showing labor costs growing at four and a half percent per year. Um, there's other ways. These could be um, increasing by a half a million a year, whatever. Um, but it's whatever is built into the assumptions of the model. We're assuming a starting rate and a uniform annual growth rate. And we're going to raise this to the one power. that down and then our energy costs again energy is a hard coded number um, this this could be a function of the the um, tons of coke produced and and then you would have a kilowatt hour cost or megawatt hour cost whatever um, it would be a kilowatt hour cost we're saying it's 20 million a year and it's a million. We're going to give it a growth rate of one plus three percent. We're going to raise it to the one power. And then we're going to leave this to a total expense number. So this equals the sum across these four. That's what this looks like. So this is our revenue and this is our expense worksheet. Now let's look at our investment worksheet. The investment worksheet is going to have two things uh, applied to it. Um, one is the actual investment itself, and then we're going to compute depreciation from this investment worksheet. I'm going to show you this, how this depreciation is calculated in a later video. But this one's pretty straightforward for this project. Some projects have multiple investments, and so we're going to put, we have an initial investment of $140 million. And then we're going to have a year eight overhaul. And let's make sure we get this right. It says here, um, where is it right here? Um, at the start of year eight. So that's going to be end of year seven, right? Start of year eight. So it's um, not end of year eight, end of year seven. So the year eight uh, overhaul is actually end of year, end of period seven. So that's going to equal 
40 million. And again, we could have multiple investments. We would put a column for each investment. And so this is going to equal the sum of these two columns. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for for you to turn in the revenue ex worksheet, expense worksheet, investment worksheet, not in PDF format and Excel format. And what are we going to do with these? These are going to feed the um, after tax cash flow worksheet. I'm going to take you through the pre tax cash flow worksheet. And I do want to add this year column here. And so our investments, um, let's enter the investments as a negative number. So this is going to equal negative total investment from the worksheet. I'm leaving room for a salvage value because I asked for a salvage value um, in the, um, you know, as, as one of your sensitivities, but right now it's zero. Uh, the revenue stream is going to come from the revenue worksheet. So we're just going to go to the revenue. I think I started at period zero. And we're going to go just like that. These should be dollars. Why aren't they dollars? I'm not sure they're dollars now. Same thing with the expense worksheet. We're going to grab the total expenses. Now, I'm entering the expenses as a positive number. If we want to make them, an, uh, let's enter them as a negative number. I think it's a little bit easier to visualize them that way. We're just going to make it a negative there. We'll copy that down. Need another. So brackets signify a um, negative number. So our pre-tax cash flow, including the investment, is going to equal the sum across here. Let's try that again. Um, and this is kind of where you've been so far with your project analyses. And so we can calculate internal rate of return on this. Our before tax cash flow, IRR. is 30 percent, 29.9 percent. Now um, the rest of these columns in this worksheet are going to be uh, things you're not uh, haven't seen yet. You'll see them next week. But let me show you what we can do with this. We can point to this performance variable And now I can say, I can do a little what-if analysis right here. I can say, well, what if my tons of Coke were 530,000 tons per year? My turn rate of return drops from 30% to 23.6%. Um, now, probably my energy costs would have dropped as well and raw materials. So that's why I... 
I, I made the comment that these were gross simplifications the way this project was, was entered. Um, what if my revenue for 10 was 310? My IRR drops from 29.9 to 21.7. So this is my input. This is my results. Um, so that's kind of why I like putting them together on the same page. You change one number and it carries all the way through. What if my labor costs were not 75? What if they were 90? Labor is a big chunk here, isn't it? And we can look at what's happened to our total expenses. It's 150000 in the first year. If we kept it at 75000 it's 133000 34000 in the first year. So that's what we're doing here. Um, we want to build an after-tax cash flow worksheet. I've taken you through the before-tax cash flow numbers. What I'm looking for is a deliverable as a revenue worksheet, expense worksheet, investment worksheet. I believe you should have an input worksheet as well. I didn't ask for it, but that's the starting point. You only want to enter numbers one time. I hope this has been helpful. I will take you through the depreciation calculations in a later video.